Hi all, I'm Cullen Haynes and this is Law Live. My next guest is a digital prolific powerhouse, Mr. Brendan Kelso. Been doing this um, for the last four years, was a legal graduate as well, so speaks legalese and uh, hence the reason why he's had so much success because his clients know that there is no BSing around this man and helps them scale, grow their profile online. Would you please make welcome the incomparable founder of Legal Sites, Mr. Brendan Kelso. How are you, Brendan? Oh, I'm so glad you didn't say I was the incompetent founder, which is what I thought you were about to say. No <laughs> But I'm way. doing great. I'm incomparable, incomparable, incomparable. Incomparable, my friend. And uh, tell me, what is happening in your circle of influence? What's the latest? Dude, it's uh, it's um, I'm in the fortunate position that my business is going really well, and we've been getting uh, we I mostly run this by myself because I am um, obsessed with getting everything right. So yeah, it's been going well. A lot of word of mouth referrals. So the quality of client is really great. Um, I took on some clients in my early days that I think you know I think it was a natural part of my business i had to learn from a lot of that and now like i'm i consider myself friends with my clients like it's just great and we have regular chats and we don't just chat about marketing we talk about my dog we talk about their dogs we talk about all types of stuff so it's going well oh that's fantastic my friend i like seeing good things happen to good people especially those that um are doing the almost the polar opposite of what they set out to do uh, marketing um, and the online space is very different to law, but we'll get into that. And I would encourage people, it is now, let me tell you, 4.03 um, in Sydney, Eastern Standard Time. Please, if you've got any burning questions for Brendan, we are streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Get them in now, and we will answer them live. This is live on the show. Um, and if you've got anything more pertinent, I'm sure Brendan would uh, welcome a cheeky DM indeed. Uh, but obviously we're talking about um, your world in um, legal sites and um, life as a busy digital market for, marketer for lawyers and law firms. Uh, I'd love to get in before we get into that. If you could explain your life uh, or describe it using film titles, how would you describe your life so far? Yeah, I'm glad you sent me the questions today because <laughs> that one that one would have uh, that would that would have stumped me. But since I work from home, I thought I'll I'll say home alone is uh the one that <laughs> Kevin Yeah yeah we'll go with home alone I was originally going to go oh super bad but no that would be so cringe so no nah, definitely home alone uh, but I am with my dog and uh and I work in cafes and I've got a little team as well but I nah, mate home alone we're going Oh with very that. good what's your what's your dog's name and Noah, what breed do you have It's Wesley and he is a 6 year old yellow labrador Beautiful Beautiful. Not named after Wesley Snipes, the actor? No, definitely not. No. Um, do you have a dog? I do. Alfie the Labradoodle, six years old. I think I remember you, I remember you telling me that. Same year. Oh, my, dude, they, these two need to become mates. I think so. Uh, we are going to organize a puppy date presently after this, I think. It's it's on the cards. Yeah, no, it sounds good. Well, I'm moving to Sydney, so... I'll probably show up on your doorstep one day. Um. Please, please. <laughs> it's, it's not the odd, oddest thing that's happened here in French's Forest. Let me tell you, people have done that before. Out of the blue. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that's always good. Oh, dude. Yeah, there you go. But not many people know this about you, Brendan. You actually used to be, before you started legal sites, you used to be a law grad. Yeah. I went to uni and started a business in entertainment so pr primarily wedding djs and mcs uh, throughout the hunter valley newcastle a bit of sydney central coast all of that and yeah i got, got the taste of running a business and it was a really good business to run while being at uni because i could do uni throughout the week and on the weekends i'm at weddings and uh yeah and so i did that learn how to market a basic small business and I know, uh, you know, a, a DJ agency has many differences to a small law firm, but a lot of the <laughs> principles with marketing a small business are very similar. Uh, you know, a lot of principles for a, a good website that is found on Google and converts is, you know, there's a lot of similarities across many different industries. So I learned about that and really got into it, loved it and loved the sales part of running a business and marketing and some social media as well. And Finished law and I think after about, I think when I was about three years into law, 
I was like, mm, I don't really know if I want to go and work for someone else right now. I was really enjoying working for myself. And then finished, graduated. And um, before graduation, I had done about two weeks at the College of Law so I could get my practicing certificate. And I was not enjoying it. And I think I did, I whipped out a, a Google document and I just wrote down like, why am I doing this? And how much do I want to be a lawyer on a scale of one to 10? And I think I gave myself a two. Uh, okay. So that was not very convincing. <clears throat> so I pulled out just before the census date and saved myself $10,000. And <laughs> um, long story short, came up with the idea of having a, a marketing agency that helps out small law firms and created the name Legal Sites, bought the domain for about 10 bucks off uh, GoDaddy or something and built the website, sent out a few cold emails, probably about five or 10 cold emails to local firms, got my first two clients. And Boom, there we go. just like I that. It, like, I made yeah. it sound so easy. <laughs> well, what does Bruce Lee say? You just drop the, the rock into the water and you just watch the ripples. And that's what you did. The Dude. real mate. There you go. Well, there you go. You got to watch um, Enter the Dragon or um, He's Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. Yes. Hey, how many movies does he have that have Dragon in the title? I think there's a fair few, let me tell you. Yeah. Dude was obsessed <laughs> with dragons, but I made it all sound so simple. Uh, it wasn't, but that was my journey. I didn't have to suffer through five years of law, but I think it helps. I, th I think so. I think so. Well, do do you find that people like the fact that you've done law and they're gravitating towards that? So they, they know that you've at least got what it takes. You know, you're, you're part of that secret club that not many of us get to join. It does help. It comes up in conversation with a lot of potential clients and existing clients. And people will frequently say, well, you're a lawyer. And I'm like, not a lawyer, not pretending to be a lawyer. I graduated law. I pulled out of my practicing certificate training after two weeks. I'm not a lawyer. Um, let me make that clear because it is against the law to pretend that you're a lawyer. Um, but <laughs> it definitely it definitely helps that I've been through the five years of law school. Also got a communication degree because you've got to do double degrees, which is definitely a scam. Thanks, universities. And yeah, so it definitely helps. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um and talking about what you do, what's the number one thing? What's the number one problem you solve for your clients? Yeah, yeah, good question. So my clients are small law firms. I'm not pretending to target law firms like, you know, big, medium to big law firms. Absolutely not. They have their own things sorted out. So small law firms and their main problem usually is that they are not getting clients online. Now, I provide general advice with social media, but I've resisted the urge to try and do a little bit of everything, which I, th I believe a lot of marketing agencies get wrong. I think they try to be jack of all trades and they go down a really um, slippery slope there. So I help them get clients primarily through Google. So uh, they come to me and usually their website is not performing for them. They've often had a website built by a graphic designer or maybe someone who considers himself a marketing expert. And for, for <laughs> many different reasons, the website hasn't brought in the traffic that they want. It hasn't converted. They really often have no idea how the website is performing. If it ranks for any keywords, they're just kind of in the dark. A lot of the time they, their website hasn't even been set up properly on Google <laughs> search console and Google analytics and all this other stuff, which is important and very easy to do, but a lot of people don't do it. No, um, and so I help them get clients mostly through Google using a website and then running Google ads and search engine optimization, SEO. See a lot of that hit my inbox. SEO. How do you separate the pretenders from people who actually know what they're doing, Brendan, on that SEO? The problem with that is there's really no barrier to entry. If someone was... Uh, wanting to start a business and wanted to get to market as quickly as possible, digital marketing is one of the best ways to do it, truly. You just need a laptop, you need an internet connection. And yeah, you do need skills. If you don't have skills and if you're not going to work hard and do the right thing for people, you're not going to last very long. But if you um, truly just want to get into it and, and make a quick bark, unfortunately, digital marketing is one of those things because the 
costs to get started. It's just so small. So how do you know if someone really knows what they're doing? Yes. Well, um, results. <laughs> what if like go and look at the websites that they have worked on and don't yes. trust their um, their words. Their um, like go and actually search if, if, if this is a a family law firm that they have worked for then where is this family law firm based let's say it's in melbourne how do they rank for a keyword like melbourne family lawyers how do they rank for melbourne divorce lawyers you can use many different tools out there to actually get an accurate list of keyword rankings like i can list them off but i'm some people might sort of fall asleep but there's many ways to check keyword rankings of websites you can do seo audits so you can see okay does this website actually have good seo and go and look at the content that they say that like have they written any content for this client have they created blog posts have they created news articles have they created really useful practice area pages so you'd know for um, like a cr criminal law firms will often have pages for many different criminal offenses and traffic offenses, and they'll have pages about, about bail applications and apprehendance file, apprehended violence orders and all these types of things, what to wear to court, all, the, all this type of stuff. So have they actually created written content? Because that is one of the most important parts of SEO. And a lot of SEO so-called experts don't really do a lot of that because it's difficult it takes time and it requires skill. Mm. It's a good point that you're making about um, the proof is in the pudding. Look at the results, look at the work that they've done um, and actually see what results they're getting. And I think that's an important point. Um, now, obviously, this is a bonus question. We didn't rehash this, guys. It's not rehearsed. Google has undergone a shift. I think it's version four or their Google console now. Um, has that disrupted the market that everyone has to move on to this new platform? Does everyone start from scratch? Um, is now a good time to revamp your website. Are you talking about Google Analytics? Yes, yes, yeah. I am. See, I don't even know what I'm talking about. That's why we've got <laughs> you on the show, Brendan. That's okay. Uh, no, so Google's been sending many emails out to people who are registered for Google Analytics, telling them about this uh, this migration. So you go in there and you just have to migrate all of your settings to the new platform. Um, so just go and read one of those emails that you've gotten from Google and do what they're telling you to do. It's yeah. not the end of the world. It's actually much easier to use the new version of Google Analytics. Yeah. I really okay. mumbled that Google Analytics. It's a hard word to Google say. Google Analytics, the subtitles are reading. And um, I've heard that there's a thing called um, link jumping or the more links to your website from external places like YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, boosts your profile. Should people be getting out with their content like video, like you're a big advocate of? Should they be busting out and doing that? Um, and does that help their website if they've linked it to their website? Yeah. Okay. So getting links from social media sites like YouTube and Facebook, like that stuff helps. But how do I explain? It, it's mostly useful so you can get some traffic to your website because anyone can just create a YouTube video. A, it can literally just be a video of a, a of a blank screen for 10 seconds. Anyone can do that and then they can link back to their website and Google knows that. Um, so the main value is uh, linking to your website and getting traffic. Now, backlinks, the types of backlinks that a law firm would want, I'll, I'll speak about law firms because, you know, they're my target audience. Let's talk about it. You want backlinks from websites that are of high value and that are relevant. Now, obviously, you can't have all your backlinks from highly valuable, relevant websites. Occasionally, you'll attract a, a link from a, oh, I can't swear, can I, from a terrible website. Um, but like a good example would be like a website like Lawyers Weekly. Okay. This is a reputable news, art, uh, news website based in Australia. That has good authority with Google. And if you were to have a piece of content on their website and they link to your website, that's probably going to be a good thing for you if you're a law firm because it's relevant and it's a high quality website. Um, so that's what a backlink is. That's when one website links to another. It's about quality over quantity. Don't yes. go and pay for these you know, scam artists who are sending out emails promising you all these backlinks for 50 bucks from all these websites that are apparently really great because they're not great. 
They're link farms. They're absolutely useless. Those emails go to junk folders usually for a reason, and that's where they should stay. Don't go on Fiverr and pay people for links. Getting backlinks and high quality links is challenging. One of a good a good way to do it is to be someone like my client Harrison Dell or Harry Dell Tax Talk, for example. He's on TikTok. He's a legend. Shout out to Harry and Harry's also great. Bitcoin King as <laughs> yeah. well. So he's already been mentioned on a lot of reputable and relevant websites like Binance, for example, and one of my jobs for him was getting a lot of links to his website from websites that have already talked about him, but they just haven't linked. So often you've probably got it for legal home loans and your own name. I bet there are websites out there that have mentioned you for whatever reason. Maybe they've done an interview with you. Maybe you did a podcast. Maybe you provided a quote. I don't know. I bet you're mentioned out there on Google somewhere on many websites and they haven't linked to you because they just didn't think about it. You can probably go and get some backlinks. Maybe, you know, maybe you've got, you know, an, an intern or something that, you know, needs a bit more work to do. So go and tell them, um, go and get us some backlinks, Emily. <laughs> get us some backlinks. Uh, that's the verbiage you should use. Get the bank links. Um, Emily the or bank Joe links. or whoever. <laughs> the bank, the bank links. <laughs> the <what>? uh, <laughs> uh, but look, you are a man of many skills. Switching gears a little bit. There's a guitar in the background. Guitar, G-U-I-T-A-R. Um, what are the passion projects you're working on right now? Yeah, so I do try and sing and write songs. I, I Look, you can go and look at it, Spotify, search for Brendan Hamilton if you want, shameless plug. I haven't done any work on my music for most of this year because I've just been flat out, but Brendan Hamilton, yeah, thanks for putting that down in the comments. Go and... <laughs> Check it out. I don't know. Look, I'm probably actually going to revert back to my real name because it feels really weird using the pseudonym. I just at the time thought it'd be strange if people were looking for Brendan Kelso and they were to find a singer-songwriter. Um, they might think, I thought he did marketing for law firms. What does this guy even do? We've got the Spotify link in the comments, guys. Get on it now. It's a great photo as well there, Brendan. I agree. Um I'm sure Google would like that as well, having as many Brendan Kelsos linked back to legal sites, even if it is from your your Spotify um, wonderful mm. albums that you're putting out. Yes, dude. Yeah. No, that is a good photo. The photo that I have on my Spotify, I think it's very flattering. I've never looked so good in all my life, and I think it's mostly because of the photographer. Very good. And you're a verified artist, which is uh, impressive in its own right. I think everyone is. So you've just got to sign up for Spotify for artists or some something like that. And you just, yeah, man, everyone's a verified artist. There you go. Oh, you're underselling it. I can feel it. No, it's not like getting uh, the blue tick on Twitter or whatever. Which you can now pay for. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Elon. Thanks, Elon. Very good. The bots are worried. Um, what would you like to see change in law, Brendan? Yeah. So look, I don't have my finger on the pulse with legislation and all that that's not really my thing i'm more in the marketing field but like i did i'm glad i got your questions earlier because i one thing I, I think we really need to sort out I, I really need clarity on what the hell's going on with our recycling so i think we like whoever's like what you, you know what I mean? like when you put a can in the recycling bin are you confident that that's getting recycled because i'm not i think we need to sort that out I think we do too. This is um I should do a poll on this. Let me tell you. Yeah, we need I need clarity. I I know this is an issue for the local councils, but I think that we need out Al Anthony Albanese to start talking about it more because most people no, I, I can't speak for everyone, but I think a lot of people are concerned about what's going on with all the the cans and the plastic and everything. Oh, I like that. There you go. You heard it here first, folks. What is happening with the uh recycling um, situation when it gets to the plant? Is it being sorted? Is it being um, coordinated? It's, it's, Dude, it's an important legal <laughs> legal issue and I'm glad you're bringing it up. It's the biggest problem of, of our time, uh, to be honest. So my girlfriend, she painstakingly washes all of the recycling. She washes the soft plastic because we recycle soft plastic as well. And she leave, leaves it on the... Um, you know, the rack where you put all the cutlery and the plates and everything. And she dries it out because she 
wants to make their job as easily as easy as possible. So uh, we are being incredibly courteous oh, over here in Newcastle, and we need some clarity. Are, are you guys recycling our stuff or not? I don't know. <laughs> let's put it out there let's see if they can respond and you're more than welcome to put it in the comments if you are watching um, recycling um, and the, the local councils of course um, lessons for young professionals digital marketers lawyers whoever they may be watching uh, what's something you'd like to impart um, for our brief time we're speaking now and live on the podcast as well yeah I probably will I'll say some of the things that everyone says um, start getting to know people be sociable, make friends, make connections, work on your people skills and your social skills. And I'm always doing that. I've been awkward for most of my life. So <laughs> go, go and uh, go on, go and make some friends. And, but for me, I, I'm, I think one thing that I've done really well is while I was at uni, I started really thinking about how do I want a typical day to look like in my life? Um, how do I want my job to serve my life and to help me serve others? And I don't have it completely right. Obviously, we all have to do things we don't want to do, but I've really created a job that allows me to do good work and to help people. And I get some more flexibility and freedom in my life. I don't have to wear shoes. I can be at home with the dog. I can, you know what I mean? Like that's one thing that was really important to me and, um, don't just go out there and follow a career path because you think that's what you should do and that's because what everyone else is doing. I love that. Any um, areas where people should focus on their people skills that you found very helpful? Did you join a local business chamber, um, networking groups, meetups? Because um, I, I hear that a lot. But the argument I, I hear is everything's online now. Where should I go to, to, to sharpen up my business skills? Or do I do a BNI as contrived as it is? Well, if you're young and you're at uni, B and I probably isn't for you. But there are, <laughs> like, not trying to shut you down there. But if you're at, at like, if you're old like me and Cullen, then yes, yeah, yes, maybe at North B and I. Is 25, because yeah. um, we're both 25. Um, yeah, so, yeah, somewhere in your 30s, then go to a B and I. Sure, that that could work well for you. I guess it depends on what sort of work you do. If you're a mortgage broker, it definitely makes sense. I like I went to a Hunter Young Professionals event in Newcastle recently. That's a, a business networking group in Newcastle, and I was just blown away by how many people there. Every event they're doing, almost every event, is selling out super quick. They're not cheap to attend, and there's just so many young people going there. Some who have just entered their you know their career, and they want to meet people. And like I can. My assumption from it is people aren't getting to interact and meet new people as much. And so some of these groups are just blowing up. So absolutely um, go to some of those events. The thing that's really helped me to improve my social skills is to just really learn how to become more interested in a wide variety of different people. Take a real interest in people because you'll find them more interesting when you do that. And one of the books that I really, I really enjoyed how to win friends and influence people. If you've Dale never Carnegie. read it, you, it's a great book. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. If you've never read it, you probably think it sounds like, you know, how to manip manipulate people, but it's definitely not that. How to lose friends and alienate people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it's about, have you read it? It's, it's really about how oh, to be a better person. It's in, there. it's in there. It's in there. One story I particularly like from that book is the boy and the, um, the salesperson. Um, so the uncle invites his sales friend over and there's a young um, five-year-old playing with his boat. Um, and, you know, the salesman cam comes in and says, oh, what do you got there? I've got a boat. Oh, I love the ocean. Tell me more about it. Oh, well, you can put this boat on the ocean. Um, oh, what color is it? Oh, well, it's this color. And he speaks 10 to 20 minutes to this kid about boats um, and, and, and et cetera. And then when he leaves, um, he says, oh, I really love your, um, your friend that you brought over. Is he a captain of a ship? Because he seemed to know a lot about boats. And he said, no, he's just interested in boats because you're interested in boats. Um, you know, he, he made you feel important. And I just love that. It's not manipulating, but most people don't realize that um, sales is a very simple thing or adding value is a simple thing. It's getting interested in the other person. Most people, especially on LinkedIn, they just get in there and then as soon as you connect with them, they just drop the sales text. This is what I can do. They, they, there's no, so, there's no um, 
getting to know the other person. And I think that's, if you can get that early on in your career that you get inter- interested is interesting, get to know people mm. and see how you can add value or who you can introduce them to first, that give, 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 get, then ask model. Um, it's going to open doors for you. And, and that book set me on that path very early on in my life. Oh, well, there you go. Oh, it's a great one. Yeah, when you when you start finding when you yeah, I hundred percent agree with that. And when you find when you start looking for interesting things about people, you'll find them more interesting. And people will like we all most of us want to be liked. We want to make friends. It's in <laughs> our best interest to like have friends and not enemies. Um, and if we, if we start asking people more about themselves and we stop crapping on about ourselves more, people naturally will like us more. And we'll like them more because they like us. It's a win-win. 100%. 100%. I would say if you're starting a business like Brent, a successful one like Brendan, you will not have everyone like you. You will have people unsubscribe from you, unfollow you, um, get off your email lists. That is completely normal, um, I would say as well too. So um, as much as it's important to um, get everyone to like you, um, you've got to be prepared to be a bit vulnerable do you think you have to have a thick skin in business there, Brendan? Oh, mate, I put up with so much crap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yeah, you do. You do have to have a thick skin. Um, every time I send out an email to my list, a few people unsubscribe. Of course. Now, that's okay. It wasn't for them. Um but I don't send out a lot of emails. But yeah, absolutely. Some people aren't going to like you. And if you're just going to be really vanilla and boring and not um, be different in any way, shape or form, then uh, so you're not going to get a lot of people who don't like you, but you're probably not going to reach a lot of people either. So you really need to you know, try and be authentic. Love that. Be authentic. Don't be a jerk. Message of that question. No. Don't be a don't jerk. Be a don't jerk. be a troll. <laughs> Don't be a troll. Absolutely. Be nice to people on the way up because as I always say, you'll be seeing them again on the way down. Absolutely. Um, a bit cathartic, this question there, Brendan. It's the final one for the official stream. When all is said and done and we've got the epitaph for um, Brendan Kelso, how would you like to be remembered? I, I just want everyone to think I was a great bloke. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like great bloke, but... In all seriousness, no, no, I'm, I am serious. I think I'm a decent guy and a pretty good dog dad, I would say. I think, uh, look, I hope I live beyond the life of my dog as much as that you know, makes me sad, but uh, I hope I live longer than Wesley. But great bloke, pretty kind, generous, you know, was pretty good on the Law Life podcast. I think that should definitely, it's you know. It's the highlight of your long and luminous career, I think, this Law Live yeah, absolutely. What about you, Carlin? I've been crapping on about myself. How do you want to be remembered? I just want to be remembered, um, honestly, as someone who gave more than they took um, and you know left this place a little bit better than he found it. My whole goal in life is to leave people better than I found them. Um, <laughs> I might not always do that 99% of the time, but I'm, I'm doing my best for that. Um, so oh. yeah, appreciate that question, Brendan. No one's ever actually thrown that back on me. What the hell? What kind of people do you have on this show, dude? <laughs> oh, I know. I've just got egomaniacs and um, narcissists. No, I'm just joking. Yeah. No, everyone no, on the show is We love fantastic. everyone. We love everyone. Of course. Absolutely. Uh, what does what um, Philippe Doyle Gray say? Um, no one ever achieved anything by being offended. So um, we don't want to offend anyone, but we definitely want to challenge thoughts. Uh, Dixon uh, Muswilly has tuned in and said, I'm excited to see you from Kenya. So there you go. You're making an impact in ripples all the way over to our African brethren there, Brendan. So well done, one of me. Hell yeah. How you going, Dixon? Hey, Patricia. <laughs> What's up? Patricia's got it. Nice input. Thanks. Thanks, Patricia Gannon, a legend in her own right. Um, and feel free, where are you hanging out most there, Brendan? Where would you welcome people to visit you, send DMs? Where where, where are you hanging out right now? Yeah, well, you know, in Newcastle. Uh, no, but on what online, uh, on, online platforms? Look, I've been pretty busy. I'm somewhat active on LinkedIn. So, yes. Add me on LinkedIn, but if you're going to be one of those annoying people who sends me one of those DMs that Carla mentioned before, and you're just trying to promote your crap, then go away. I don't go away. I, Use the voicemail sends, feature. Brendan would like that. Brendan would like that, mate. When people send me one of those, 
a connection request and there's an, a copy paste little sales pitch in there. I'm just like, no, nah. because then if you accept them, they then annoy you for the next couple of weeks, following <laughs> you up with all these stupid messages, go away. So, but no, if you're not one of those people, of course you're not. If you're listening to this law live, then you're a good person. So add me to LinkedIn. I'm doing a bit of a uh, bit of TikTok, a little bit of Instagram, Definitely go to the website, legalsites.com.au, L-E-G-A-L-S-I-T-E-S, legalsites.com.au. Sign up to my email list. Please don't unsubscribe because I cry every time someone unsubscribes. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a there's a Brendan somewhere in the world that is crying when you unsubscribe. So please just subscribe, <laughs> add it to the list. Um, and on TikTok, yay or nay for businesses, it, should it be a major part of their strategy? If you like TikTok, then you should use TikTok. I think I I had James Dapache on my pod a while ago. and He's a legend, isn't he? Of course he is. I'm name dropping like crazy in this podcast. But <laughs> James Dapache is a good guy. And he, he said, look, just do the social media things that you like doing. So if you hang out on LinkedIn and you like LinkedIn, do LinkedIn. If you don't like do LinkedIn, LinkedIn, don't do it. If you have grabbed, if you have, if you're a 55 year old barrister and you actually like TikTok, go and do TikTok. It's not about lip syncing and dancing and pointing at text and everything anymore. TikTok's evolved. Social media apps age up. So do the, the social media platforms that you enjoy using yourself. A very nice and apt way to end our podcast, my friend. Well, Thank you so much thumbs? for being. <laughs> Where's the thumbs? Two thumbs up there, mon ami. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on there, Brendan. We'll bring you back for some bonus questions, my friend. Yay. Thank you, sir. And if you are a legend of law or know someone who'd like to be on the show, I'd welcome a cheeky DM. We come out Wednesday, every Wednesday, talking to a powerhouse. And we'll have this live and uploaded on the podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Bye for now, everyone. Take care. Bringing you back, Brendan. First bonus question, my friend. If you could explain your role to a six-year-old, how would you do that? The same way I explain it to people who are <laughs> uh, over the age of 55, I just say, I help small law firms get clients on Google. Love that. Simple. Cannot um, go wrong with an answer like that. So help small businesses, law firms get more clients on Google. There you go, Monami. This is a physics question. What is Monami? What's Monami? Monami is my friend in French. So um, it's it's something I usually say. I've got people that have asked me, my name's not Monami. I go, I know that. Um, uh, I could say Mon Frere or Mon Suer, which is my brother or my sister. Uh, but Monami is my go-to. Oh, how's your French, Colin? Is it good? It's, uh, oh, comme si, comme ça, you know? Okay. Bonjour, comment ça va? J'habite okay. Australie, je m'appelle Colin. You know, I've got oh, the basics down. Good for you. I barely know any, so... Except for the obvious swear words, but um, no, I've got nothing. Mierd, 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 mierd. Absolutely. <laughs> Is there any languages or um, uh, little hobbies that you've got on at the moment to improve your language or other skills, my friend? Look, I have definitely got shiny object syndrome. I have to pull myself back all the time. So I am interested in many things and it does not take much for me to get obsessed with things. So I speak a li little bit like very tiny little bits of german and spanish but i would ah. never i would never um try and engage in conversation with anyone because i have no idea i'm oh, an idiot okay. no no it's good to know a little bit of a lot because then you can um engage with people from all walks of life I, my german is very small it's um ich bin ich und du bist du ich heiße Cullen und wie heißt du which i believe means i am me and you are you I am Cullen, and who are you? Seems it's like an old childhood nursery rhyme. I think you. I think that sounds correct to me. So, yeah. <laughs> is that all you know? Is just that little little. Line? Oh, and and the Ramstein song, uh, "Du Du Hast." Du Hast, du hast yeah. You have me. You yeah. have me. I, I thought That's... it was "You Hate Me" for years. I only uh, realized recently it was "You Have Me." It would have been better if it was "You Hate Me." I guess yeah, "You Have Me." I don't know what that means, but like you know. <laughs> I don't think the Germans are particularly fond of Ramstein. I have no idea why. It's obviously very poetic. <laughs>
<laughs> it, it reaches you on so many levels, let me tell you. Um, uh, and this is a quantum physics type question. We're getting into our DeLorean and kicking it to 88. Um, Doc and Marty are on standby for this one, let me tell you. If you could give yourself advice at any age, Brendan, uh, what age would you be? And what would the specific advice be? Mm. Oh, my God. We're getting really serious on Law Live, Colin. <laughs> yes, we are. Kind of make me cry. Nah, but well, I I tend to take the piss out of myself. So I would definitely say uh, if I could go back to when I was about 18 or 20, I'd say, Brendan, do something about your hair loss now. Um, <laughs> you, so, mate, I've got less hair than you, mon ami. Come on. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm on drugs, Colin. So I was able to get a bit back, but I wish I had gone on the drugs when I was younger. But I was in denial. I probably had a, co- a comb over for a few years there. So yeah, take more drugs. But besides that, I would, I would just like, I used to just beat myself up a lot. I was very hard on myself. I still am. And I would say, um, yeah, don't do that, uh, Brendan. (laughs) But uh, I didn't like, I I didn't know I was having therapy. Uh, So let me just switch this, Carlin. Um, So what advice would you give to yourself? What advice would I give to myself? Oh, that's a good question. I would, um, Probably go back to when I was um, 18 years old, when I finished high school in Aubrey Wodonga, Xavier High School. Shout out to anyone who's life on the border. Um, and I'd say, just remember to have fun as well as, um, you know, try and get ahead in life. I think it's so well and good to strive. And if you f- spend your life striving, sometimes you can never arrive. So I'll just say, just be, be, be mindful to have fun along the way. And good, good advice. And kids get a good mortgage broker. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Um, when Legal Home Loans is founded in 2018, we're ready for you. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Colin. That was delightful. Thank you so much for coming on, my friend. And um, we'll upload this later. And it's absolutely been an utter delight from um, guitars to music to legal sites to backlinks to German. I think we've covered a whole range of things. So definitely the SEO will be working on this episode, let me tell you. Mm. Yeah, yeah, wunderbar. Yeah, it's good. Auf Wiedersehen, everyone. Have a great day.